It is like a finger pointing to the moon. Don't look at the finger, or you'll miss all that heavenly glory. This is a guide to crafting a vision for your life's work and getting out of a rut. Stick with me because this is going to be a bit long, but this is very important because as I've talked about in the past, I've struggled a lot with trying to create direction with my life, trying to create something that I'd be proud of and just feeling purposelessness and very meaningless. And this is kind of the guide that I needed when I was going through those tough kind of times. I'm going to start with a thought experiment that's inspired by Alan Watts. Stick with me through this. Um, so I want you to close your eyes and just imagine you can lucid dream and you can dream up whatever kind of scenario you want. You could have whatever you wanted. You could do whatever you wanted. Most likely you'd kind of choose to have, if you're a guy, I'm going to assume that you're going to have a nice partner. You're going to have a lot of pleasurable things around you. You're going to have a great time. You're going to have everything that you want. Money, success, fame, beautiful women, whatever you want. Now, imagine you have this for a couple of weeks. It would start to kind of get boring and you'd want to add something more to it. So maybe you add a little obstacle. Maybe you add something that makes it a bit more difficult. Maybe you add a dragon to get rescue the princess. And then it starts to create more meaning because you're sacrificing for something. You're having to put in effort and face these bad kind of things to get the thing that you want. And eventually these things would get bigger and bigger and scarier and scarier because you want something more stimulating. And what worked in the past isn't quite as stimulating because getting what you want right as you want it isn't very, is too easy. It's too beneficial and it's not very fulfilling. So you added more obstacles and eventually you would think yourself into the situation you are now watching this video. So why did I start with this? You can open your eyes now if you were closing them. Um, from the base of the mountain, your view is limited. From where you are now, you can't really see quite a lot. Maybe there's lots of trees around. You can kind of see the top of the mountain. You can see maybe a path that can get up there, but you're not quite sure how to get up there. So what can you do to try and get better clarity on your life, get better awareness? to see what you want and gain a better view of yourself, of life. And why is this important? So the importance of this crafting a vision is so that you can get clarity on your life, so you can have something to work towards, so you have problems to solve and you can identify them, work on them, build on them. And this is what life is because you will always have problems. And if you solve the problems that you have, you start to learn to enjoy the, solving these problems. And once you enjoy solving these problems, life becomes a bit easier because I've found that I'm more able to lean into the, the harder side, the discomfort of it, because I can see the benefit and it's becoming more and more enjoyable as I go along. So how do you get more perspective when you're trying to, when you see that there's something better, you can see this mountain, but your view is kind of limited and you're not sure how to get up there. You start by looking at the past, by crafting an anti-vision. Seeing what worked in the past, seeing what things you were drawn to, what excited you, what knowledge you kind of learned and wanted to attach to. And just think, what's your current situation? Is it something that you want? Where are you heading towards? Is that something where you want to head towards? Like for me, I've talked about when I've talked about my anti-vision. My direction wasn't a great wasn't a great one. You know, it's going to lead to me feeling more depressed, more meaningless. It's going to lead to me wanting to take my life more and more until maybe I eventually did. And just becoming clear on that and seeing where my actions would take me, the disrespect for my body, the emotional reactions and getting caught up in these kind of things and just having a lack of direction. I realized that that's not what I wanted. And if you're in this and you don't really know how to get out and maybe you've tried getting out and it hasn't really worked and that's kind of reinforced the doubt that maybe you can't get out. I just want to say that I believe in you because I've come from there and I wish someone would, told me, would have told me that they believed in me and that I could get out of that place and that I could create a life that I wanted to live and become a person that I actually wanted to become. So it's important to have a North Star for, sorry, 
It's important to have a north star, to have something to direct yourself towards, to have something to work towards. And a, a way that I found it beneficial to kind of have a north star or a direction that I wanted to go to was to look at the role models and things that I got excited about in the past to give me like a sense of direction. And <laughs> one of those people is Bruce Lee, as you could probably tell from all the poses that I have of him, of all the shirts that I've wore of him. And it's funny because I don't really do much martial arts, I did a bit of Taekwondo, but there's just something about him that just draws me, that that I'm just so drawn towards and that just excites me and just gets gets my mind going and gets me really excited and wanting to do stuff. And I find it so easy to read books about him, I find it so easy to watch his movies, to listen to anything that he says and I just get captivated by it and he's such an intelligent kind of person and that's what I was drawn to and this kind of helped give me a sense of like a code and principles to live by rather than like a set goal because these things are kind of fluid and if you pin your life on one set goal then you're kind of narrowing yourself down and like I've talked about before like in the past I thought that I wanted to become a professional soccer player and me attaching to that didn't make me realize the components that I actually liked about it and the things that I actually like, the principles that I liked about it, like taking care of my health, working on something, seeing growth in something and having a group of people that I like to spend my time with. And so once you kind of have this rough idea of like who you like, what excites you, you can kind of identify problems that you have in the moment and you can explore these interests. And the importance of picking problems and solving them is that you will always have problems and you can't just jump up to the top, you know, you can't just, if you're not, if you're not even brushing your teeth, then how do you expect to be confident with, when you're with girls, you know? Like, you've got to start from the level where you're at and be really honest with yourself and aware. And I know that it kind of sucks and it can be really difficult to confront yourself like that. But just pick some something that'll be easy and realistic to you and try and solve it. And behaviour changes to harder and it takes time. And to create that behavior change, you need to have this vision so that you have this idea of where you want to go. And then you have kind of goals that you want to set that kind of lead you towards that, which are based on the interests that you like. So then you can explore these interests, see what you like, take out things that you like, refine this process and then keep moving forward. And to create habits and, and a change in your life, you need to be aware and kind of just write out the things that you're doing each day and whether that's benefiting you, what's that bringing to you, how do you feel after it, after it. And then deciding, okay, what are the levers, what are the habits that are actually going to get me to what I want? What are the levers and habits that make my life better? What are the things that I do earlier in the day that set me up for a better day? And how can I create an environment that enforces this, that makes it easier to do these sorts of things? And... I've talked about like with this anti-vision, when you become clear on where your actions are taking you, this creates like mental clarity in a better mental environment and attitude towards changing your behavior and your habits to a better direction. And another thing with this is just trying to cool your ego, like do what's realistic and sustainable for you. To so go back to the brushing your teeth kind of thing, you know, if you're not even brushing your teeth, how do you expect to be confident with girls? Because you're going to be worried about your breath stinking and your teeth looking bad and that kind of thing. So kind of be realistic and realize that your ego is going to say, oh, I can do all these great kind of things and that sort of thing. And this is like an emotional kind of response, you know, to protect your identity, to kind of think that you're a better person than you are. And I'm very guilty of this, you know. Like sometimes I think that I'm a lot better than I really am and that I can do a lot more. And this is why I've struggled too much, so much to change in crafting a vision and sticking to it because I let my ego and my emotions kind of dictate what I did rather than just becoming aware and like listening to the voice. Like actually do this, like just be, be quiet and be still for a couple minutes and just listen to the voice that pops up in your head. It'll probably have all these random thoughts like, oh, maybe I should be doing this. Should I click on this next video? Should I continue watching this video? <laughs> and all sorts of random thoughts. And just kind of listen and be aware of it and realize how much it changes. And 
It's like this annoying little friend in your head that's constantly going, constantly th saying all these things. Oh, maybe I should work out, but I don't actually feel like working out, but then I should be working out because I want to do this, but then I've got to do these other things. And like, it's just this voice that just keeps going and it contradicts itself all the time. That at one point it's like, oh, I want the cookie. But then afterwards it's like, oh no, I feel bad for having that cookie. And like, just be aware that you're the consciousness behind it and that these thoughts and emotions that are popping up they're random and you can't tie it down because they're they're inconsistent it's saying all these different kind of things and contradicting itself all the time so you can't rely on that that's why you can't rely on your ego or your emotions so what should you do instead you should do the right thing for the sake of doing the right thing because you know it's what will get you results and what will make you feel better and this is also ties into the habits you know be, be realistic set habits and routines that you can stick to that are going to be easy and kind of listen to what your brain's kind of saying and then kind of reinforce that it's going to be something that's going to be better for you and try not to attach too much to these thoughts and these emotions that come up like if you like like for me in the mornings when I try and have cold showers my mind's like do I really need a cold shower I could I could miss it for today you know I don't really need to do a cold shower I just don't even listen to it I just ignore it I just brush it off I'm just like no, nope, I'm just having a, having a cold shower. I'm just going to hop in. No, no buts about it. Just go and do it because I know that I wake up after it and I feel better for doing it and that it's something that's uncomfortable and teaching me to deal with that discomfort because I had grown up in such this kind of comfortable, easy environment that I didn't learn that discomfort is something that can bring you a lot of growth and that's where growth is. That's where value is. That's where you learn a lot more about yourself and it becomes a lot more fulfilling when you find these problems that are like at the edge of your discomfort zone and then you try and solve them and you work on them and it just brings a sense of fulfillment and growth like just go back and look at my first video and see how I talked and then look at me now and just see this change it's only been a couple months but there's been such a massive change because I've been working on this and this has been something that I wanted to do and to solve the problems of it and this is a lifelong project this is long term like this vision is isn't something tangible it's something that's always going to grow and move on and it's going to evolve as you evolve like as i said at the start at the base of the mountain your view is limited but once you get up to the first peak maybe you see another peak and then you go over there and as you get up and climb these mountains you kind of see this whole view and maybe you realize you've climbed the wrong mountain like I realized I did when I was chasing soccer. And and then you have to completely change and reevaluate your kind of values and that sort of thing. And then you grow, but then you keep moving on because for me, I've found that having this vision, having this kind of idea of how I want my life to be, my life, my life's work, my lifelong project, you know, it helps give me this sense of direction that no matter what problems are arise, I arise and what kind of things I'm doing, I can use the codes and principles that I like into these kind of projects and then see how I feel about it afterwards. And the importance of ha having this vision is also that when you start building these habits, you get control of yourself and you start to realize like, oh, I can actually change a little bit, you know, like, Going to the gym made me realize, oh, I can actually change. I can make a change in my body. I can grow muscle. I can actually change myself. And that was such a big realization for me because I thought that this was the way that life was supposed to be. And it doesn't have to be that way. You can grow, you can learn more and you can get better. Just focus on the levers that are going to give you the most amount of growth that are going to push you forward, that are the most important to you. And just pick a few goals, just pick a few things that you want to work on whether that's like an interest that you want to kind of delve into and try out for like a month or so, and then just do it, try it out and actually apply and do some action and then see how it goes. Thank you for watching this video, especially if you watched it to the end and I'll see you in the next one.